Moreland Farms is a partnership with my wife and our three sons. We grow corn, soybeans, wheat, cotton, and cattle in northern Oklahoma and southern Kansas. We have about 15,000 acres, all no-till, in an intensive rotation year after year. In 1996, Moreland Farms turned to regenerative agriculture. It's a farming practice which has both environmental and economic benefits. One key tenet of regenerative agriculture includes what is called low-till or no-till farming, where farmers choose not to plow fields between plantings. Instead of tilling between seasons, Moreland Farms chooses to rotate their crops and go right back into the ground. So as soon as we leave a field that has been harvested with the wheat coming off the field, we come back in with the soybeans and we're planting them because once that canopy of the wheat crop is removed, it starts drying out quicker. So that's why the 24 to 48 hours is really important to get those beans in the ground deep enough to be in moisture and get sprouted and start coming up before that ground dries out. Instead of leaving this field open all summer and having to fight the weeds or work it, uh, we're, we're going out here investing some, investing some dollars, but, uh, but putting, a, uh, putting a crop back in to get one more crop in this shorter growing season. Here was your corn row, there's your wheat row, there's the soybean right there between it. I don't know what you want more regenerative than that. My grandfather passed while plowing a field and when he was 38 years old. And my grandmother had four kids and she held the farm ground together and was able to hold that to where, you know, my uncle, when he returned from college, he'd been off teaching ag for a while, he returned to that ground. And then when he left, I was able to come up and take care of that ground. So my wife and I got married in 1991, and she grew up in St. Louis, never, probably never stepped foot on a farm. She slowly, you know, got used to the farm, found her ways, but our boys grew up going out to the fields with me. I can remember James being in a car seat strapped in a combine at two years old, riding with me, and they've just grown up around it. So they developed a love of what we do as well. I don't know, you, you'll say you get, you get farming in your, your blood and that's what you want to do. Um, you know, we, we had to opt it. It was never expected that we had to come back. It was always welcome. And when we started in 1988, we were farming like everyone had in this area for years. We couldn't rotate crops. The government programs didn't allow that. 1996, the farm bills changed. The Senate passed a bill this week. I like the fact that it gives farmers some more flexibility to plant to the market and not just to the programs. And we're allowed to rotate different crops, plant different things. And along with that same time, we lost a wheat crop that year. We had a devastating drought along with big winds, kind of a mini dust bowl hit here. And at that time, it was a big fork in the road. Are you gonna keep farming like we've done forever? or you're gonna embrace no-till, crop rotation, and different methods. I've decided to start trying some different things. The idea is that no-till and crop rotation practices will help enrich the soil's biodiversity, reducing the need for chemical fertilizers. Additionally, no-till farming reduces costs and curbs diesel emissions simply by decreasing the total usage of farm machinery. Most farmers practicing regenerative agriculture alternate between cash crops and what are called cover crops. Cover crops help restore nutrients to the soil and reduce erosion, but they're generally not sold. And this is where Moreland Farms is a bit different. A lot of the regenerative ag talk is around cover crops. And in our area, we're fortunate to have an extended growing season that where a lot of farmers would put a cover crop after their corn, we can start our full hard red winter wheat season right then. Or the other one would be after wheat harvest to plant something through the summer, and that's where a cover crop at that point that's where we use double crop soybeans. So we do in part have a cover crop, but it's a cash crop that we're able to harvest. This really kind of is a cover crop. It just happens to be worth something as well. You know, the cover crops have their value in the, you know, the, the cover or the, the soil, what, whatever they may do for the soil. This, uh, this keeps the soil active. Um, you know, if we're gonna be out here all summer trying to keep the weeds clean anyway, why not have a crop growing? Um, so that, that kind of fits in. It gives us a rotation. It fills the gap, uh, you know, in, into the fall, into the late winter. Um, you know, we really, the only time ground will set open is after these beans for the few months until we plant corn. 
Moreland Farms' regenerative agriculture success is partly due to precision agriculture. The farm uses technology to pinpoint precisely what crops need to thrive and when they need it. The Moorlands use data, analytics, and cutting-edge technology to apply a precise amount of fertilizer and crop protection product so that each crop uses not a drop more and not a drop less than what is needed. So we know the micron size of the droplets we apply on the field. We want to do everything precise. We don't want to over-apply any amount of chemical. The economics of the chemical dictate that. Also the fertilizer. We don't want to over-apply fertilizer. So we use precision ag big digital processing to tell us what's the right amount. Forever it had been, here's how many pounds of nitrogen you need to apply. You go out and you blanket apply it over the whole field. Areas only needed half that much. Others could have responded to twice. It may be the same total tons or pounds on a 160 acres, but we're precisely putting it where we get the best return on that investment. Another key component of regenerative agriculture is better seeds, which boost yield and naturally guard against pests. The genetically modified crops are so important to us in this region. We have the Viptera trait, and without that trait, we could not grow dry land corn in this area. We have extreme pressure from corn earworm, and when that corn earworm gets in the ear, we have a chance of getting aflatoxin. And we are such a hot environment that that aflatoxin can get to a certain level that your corn cannot go to market. It has to be destroyed, but the Viptera trait is a GMO, a genetic modification, that allows us to not use pesticides, but it's naturally occurring, BT, and it resists the worms. So, the, but the general public will say, I do not want a GMO crop. And how many things are labeled? Non-GMO sweet potato, non-GMO green bean. But honestly, you should, you should go to that. You should go to something that's GMO because it's had less chemical sprayed. Around the world, farmers like the Moorlands face a monumental challenge. In order to feed the world's growing population and remain or become profitable, they must be more productive than ever. At the same time, farmers are under pressure to limit their impact on the environment. And no one is more acutely aware of climate change's impact than the people whose livelihood depends on weather patterns. Farmers every day are experiencing the change in the climate. We have wetter wets, drier dries, hotter hots, colder colds. It's unfortunately called it global warming because we're losing our, our tempering ability of the climate. It's what I see on our farms. Through precision ag, through our regenerative ag piece, we're just trying to make our soil more resilient, more healthy, to where we just are surviving. That dryland cor corn crop has a better ability to survive until we do catch that rain that we didn't know or we had to wait for. I've, I've used this phrase a lot that farmers were the first environmentalist and the first economist. We have to be environmentalists because we care for our ground. There's a bad feeling that people have that aren't familiar with modern agriculture that we're applying chemicals that would hurt our soil or would hurt them. I would never do anything to hurt my soil. It's our best investment. If we don't have soil, if we don't own the good land, we can't grow and be profitable. I want our soil to be improving every year and that's what we do with no-till and these regenerative practices that we're using. Also on the economic side of it, what's the top return that we can get with this amount of nitrogen, with this seed on this acre. I do see that the majority of younger farmers that are growing and expanding are doing no-till crop rotation practices. Also fuel prices this summer are gonna make some people that have been heavy tillage year after year look at maybe making a change and trying a different way. They say a, a, a visionary is someone that plants a tree that you'll never set under the shade. I wanna be building this soil for the results that I'll never get to see. We put changes in place in 1996 that my granddaughter's grandkids will see the results of. Music